Hi, and uh, welcome to the first installment ever of uh, Frank and Mary in Southboro. Um, before I start talking a little bit about, um, to my friend Doug Peck here, uh, I want to tell you a little bit of background about this show. So the idea behind this show uh, came from my friends Frank and Mary. If you have ever seen, if you've ever been to one of the presentations that I do at the South Rose Senior Center. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell, and I do presentations at the Senior Center regarding elder law issues. And the example that I always give uh, is my friends Frank and Mary, and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I always tell people, my, my make-believe friends have a goal in life, and it's very simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And when they die, they want to leave things to their kids. And the premise behind the show is that if Frank and Mary are living here in Southboro, they don't want to just live in their house, they really want to live in Southboro. And the question is, what are the programs and who are the people that they really need to know in order to be able to continue to live their lives happily um, here in Southboro until they die? And so that's the premise. And, and um, so I asked, um, um, uh, my friend Pamela Francis from the South Coast Senior Center, uh, I said, so who would be a great co-host to do this show here in Southboro? And she said, what about Doug Peck? And I said, oh my God, that's <laughs> right, Doug Peck, who lives in Southboro and has been working with seniors now for years and years. And so that's why Doug is the, <laughs> we're, we're co-hosting the show. So what we, we talked about this a little bit beforehand and we thought, well, so what do we do for the first show and, I, and we agreed that the best thing we could probably do would, tell, would be to tell you folks a little bit about ourselves, which means we're gonna interview each other. Um, and I'm gonna start off by talking to, to Doug about the, 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 what's, what's he, what he's doing, the programs that he's interested in, um, and then he's gonna ask me about some of those things. So Doug, this could be a lot of fun. Okay, yes it is. Already is, <laughs> it already is. Yeah. So um, when I first met you, it was mm -hmm. because I had, it, it, so I do work with nothing but seniors, mm -hmm. and so a lot of my, my folks have, a, especially if they are in a position where, if they're single or even if they're married, mm -hmm. that they're getting t to where there are some things they're having trouble doing at home, and so they need some kind of support doing it. Right. So I've always kind of known about home care agencies, mm -hmm. and then I heard about seniors helping seniors, mm -hmm. and about you. And I said, well, this sounds like the ideal home care agency. Mm -hmm. So can you just talk about that? I mean, I guess you also told me that you have been here now for a long time. Yes. So can you tell me about how, but you weren't born here, so you're right. not totally local. Right. right. So can you talk a little bit about how you ended up here, mm -hmm. uh, and then how you ended up doing this, mm -hmm. and then what this is, what Seniors Helping okay. Seniors is? How's yeah. it, how's because that? it is a very unique business model, it, it, I think. It something is. I'd never seen it, it I'd never seen it's it. It's one of those ideas you wish you, say, you had it yourself. Yes. You say. You, you say. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? That's right. So, so, so I have so been. In, did, I've been in Southboro for it? about forty years. Yeah. Uh, moved. Although I moved to many other places, going through school, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Ashland. Yeah. Uh, as did my wife, and my wife continues to teach uh, in Ashland. In Ashland. Yep. So I had three kids. They all went through the Southboro uh, and Algonquin uh, school system. I get it. Yeah. And you live very you, close by. Right and, but now. you came to Southboro because one I came, of your... I came to Southboro because my, my wife's uh, grandparents had built a house in Southboro. And as they got older yeah. and one passed away and one moved, um, yeah. you know, we decided we wanted that the were few that, we were, that was a nice place to live. And, so, and inevitably yeah. there were going to be people here who actually knew those people. So who, Probably who, who, did. Were, who were they? Uh, their last name was Peacock. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ray they, and Flora Peacock. And they and they had lived their lives. They here. lived. Well, they lived here for a, a number of years. They had they had a farm in in Moore and Hopkinton. So they were local as well. I see. Uh, but, I see. But didn't they weren't lo they weren't originally from South yeah. And you ended up moving to their house. Right. And and right. you're on Fisher Road. And you're on Fisher Road. And so one of the things we discovered earlier today is that so I live in Marlboro. I drive by your house every day. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people our, from Marlboro. My office is in Westboro, so yeah. now I'm going to have to go slower yeah. driving down Fisher Road because I yeah. know where you are. Okay. Yeah. So, so so that's how you got here, mm -hmm. and and how did you find come to find yourself doing what you're now doing? It, it was something that was not not something I had planned. Yeah. Uh, 
I, my prior career was in human resources, yeah. both for some large companies, uh, large international companies and some smaller uh, companies. So there was always a really a people orientation. And um, as uh, I got older and it, um, my last big company that I worked for got sold three times in a year and a half. Yep. I finally ended up moving to Dallas and um, I uh, went out on my own and was consulting on my own and my, my father had passed away and I was, ended up trying to take care of my mother, still in Ashland. I see. Realizing I now, see. and I was the closest sibling, uh, how complicated it is to try to help somebody, you know, uh, stay at home where she wanted to stay. She had no intention of moving of anywhere moving. else. Right, but to try to figure and out absolutely. all the different resources to do all that. All the different Very resources, yep. and then to, to, to take her to doctor's appointments, which is usually a half a day. I don't care what you're doing. Right. Running over, doing the odd jobs that need to be done at the house. But my wife schooled me and said, you know, she, she's, she wants you to come over. She has a list of things to you to do, she really wants you afterwards to sit down, talk to her, have a cup of tea, socialize, because that's the other reason she wants some, you to come. That's it's the not real reason. The real reason. Why she wants so you. So it's not, not, just, yeah. not yeah. just somebody yeah. coming yeah. in. Um, so I, I just happened to, I, I don't even remember now where I happened to see this idea of seniors helping seniors and uh, explored it further. It is actually started in Reading, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and the company is actually called. It's called, called Seniors Helping Seniors. Seniors Helping Seniors. Yep. Yeah. And the premise is is that all of our caregivers are seniors themselves, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a, a somewhat loose definition for that. But most of our caregivers are 55 to early 80s, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, with the bulk being in the late 60s, early to mid. Uh, seven. So they're kind of like us. They're kind of like us. Right. right. So when you bring someone like that into your home, it's more like having a friendly neighbor there than somebody coming over to help you. Right. We don't wear identifying clothing or anything because we don't want to be stipulated as that. You know, we want to be thought of as a, somebody from your community, a neighbor from your church, right. uh, etc. Uh, because people, particularly from that generation, they don't want the help. <laughs> they don't want a stranger coming into their house. You don't want a stranger. You don't want a stranger. You know, you hate to. Well, it was, there was some. There was somebody I was talking to recently about who, who does some services mm -hmm. in the home. Oh no, I remember there was a there's a company in Westboro that does nothing but provide improvements to the home mm -hmm. to make the home more accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, and he and this the owner said, you know, he'll often talk to folks and they'll say, well, I don't really need that. Yeah. And and he'll say, well. I know you don't need it, but if you had it, would you use it? Right. right. Yes. Because you never want to feel that you need it. Because of course, if you're feeling like you need it, then you're right. feeling like, especially if you're right. from our generation, if right. you're the wife that right. you ran that house, it was totally yours. And the notion of yep. having to have somebody come in to help make the bed, right? Or you know, it's a, it's tough, right? Right. It, yes. But easier if it's there's easier, somebody from your generation. Yes. That you can you, that you can talk to, and we. Uh, the people that we hire come from all different walks of life, but their characteristic is they like working with people. And they've been teachers, they've been nurses, they've, you know, they don't want to just go bag groceries or make coffee someplace. Right. They like the people to people interaction. And, 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 what, we, oh, sorry, and yeah. we carefully screen them for that. We're looking yeah. for somebody that, what we say is sort of has the heart of a volunteer. But these are all paid positions. I was just going to say, though, so these, this is not a volunteer not a organization. Not a volunteer job. They're regular W-2 employees. They're not even 1099. Nope. They're, these Covered are w, by our insurances. These are W-2 employees. Paid on a regular every two-week basis. Yeah. So, which is a big help for a lot of people. And, I mean, I don't care. You're, you're now on a fixed income for the most part. If you're, if, and you're, if you're retired, yeah. Yeah, and so they're able to do other things. I have had people say, I bought a newer car with this money. Others will save it and take a long vacation a that vacation. they want to take yeah. that they couldn't afford otherwise. So. And one of the things that surprised me is recently when you were, we were talking mm -hmm. and you said, uh, because I just, so, you know, was a full of disclosure, I just <laughs> had Doug on yeah. on the show they do in Hudson. Yes. Because you told me that you're kind of on a recruiting drive, not that right. you're looking for new, more people 
to, who need care, mm -hmm. right? Although that's always welcome. Mm -hmm. But you're really looking for caregivers. We are. We are always looking for caregivers. And, and so why it, it would seem like there would be? I mean, we, you know, we, our generation. There's right. a jillion of us. You right. know, it would seem that there would be a, a multitude of people who are interested in being caregivers. Why? Well, they're, they're not interested in being caregivers. Most people are interested in, it, there's a lot of people that are interested in looking for a part-time job yeah. where yeah. they have some flexibility, yeah. where they're not on their feet all day long, and it's something interesting for them. But they don't necessarily think of caregiving because yeah. I, I consider the people that work for us as non-traditional caregivers. Yeah. They're not personal care attendants, they're not CNAs. They don't have a nursing background. They don't have a medical background. I so see. they don't think of themselves as caregivers. So they not may have a nursing, but they don't have to have a nursing right. background. Right. And they're not doing nursing they're functions. They're not doing nursing. They're not doing personal care work. They're there to help them, again, sort of like a neighbor would. Take them to doctor's appointments. Take them grocery shopping. Uh, go out to lunch with them. Go to a movie with them. Help them around the house, but in little ways. You know, they can help organize the kitchen, make sure their, their food in the refrigerator is fresh, there's no leftover stuff, I see. you know, I see. Uh, help them make a bed, you know, just nor sort of light housekeeping type of things sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when they need it because the people just need to be there. But the right. biggest thing is just to be there as a friend because, you know, people now are get, if you're not driving and you're home alone, you're just so isolated. Right. You know, and that's right. a terrible thing for you mentally, and it affects you physically. Well, I was, and I think I was mentioning when we did the show earlier, mm -hmm. you know, the, in, in, in Hudson, we have, my wife is from Hudson, we had a, she had a very good friend uh, for whom she's organizing the, the 98th birthday party next mm -hmm. month, um, who was driving until she was 96. Yeah. And I know in those last years, I remember right. talking to her saying, Margie, you know, I know that you, you feel like you, ne you need to be driving. Mm -hmm. um, because to get around because right. she was in a house in an older subdivision and she couldn't walk to anything, mm -hmm. right? But I said, you know, there's a point at which, you know, you're not risking yourself, you're right. risking somebody else. I said, right. if you hit a little kid because your reflexes aren't quite effective, you're never gonna forgive yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I understood, you know, right. she, she knew that once that car was gone, mm -hmm. there were a set of things she just couldn't do. Right. Grocery shop, right. you know, go to the hairdresser, go yep. to the doctors. Go to the drugstore, mm -hmm. right? So, so, for a lot of folks, they're in that situation, right. you know. And this is a way. So this gives them the power. This gives actually, them a lot of to. flexibility yeah. and freedom because it, we're we're not a taxi service, so we yeah. do other things for them. Yeah. But we're also going to make sure, you know, if, you, if we're taking you to the senior center, we're going to go and stay with you. If we're taking you to a doctor's appointment, right? We're going to stay with you. You know why? Because the doctor's appointment is going to make you wait an extra half hour or an hour while you're there. And you're just going to be sitting by yourself. So we're going to be, we're company. We're, we're that, that friendly neighbor that because of the way the suburbs have, have grown up, they've, people get dispersed. Right. Your usual neighbors are probably gone either to another assisted living or someplace, right. or they've gone to live with their kids that who live out of town. That neighborhood so you grew up in. You grew up in, it's gone. Those people are gone. That's so right. you, you need right. a little bit of help. And this is a really very un unobtrusive way to provide that. So now I'm just going to mention, because mm -hmm. this, this part is an ad, because mm -hmm. you're looking for folks. Right. So if, you, if, if I were interested and I were mm -hmm. living in Southboro and I was, you know, mm -hmm. met these criteria, so would I have to be worried that if I did this, I'd have to be going to you know, Ashland or Everett or far mm -hmm. away, or can I, could I be able to specifically say I only want to be working in... Yeah, absolutely, in, in the surrounding towns. So we're town. very careful about that. Making the match yep. for who you're going to go see is very, yep. very important to us. So when when I ran my own business here, what I would do yep. is I would always bring the person that I had identified over to the client first, make a personal introduction, so everybody got to know who was going to be there. My yep. caregiver got to know how far away it was, how long it would take them to get there, and feel comfortable with that. Yep. And um, they would get to see the oh, house that's great. and, and you everything. See, so you see if it works. Right. See if, it's see if work. it works. Yeah. And also, I never liked just sending a person to meet another older person that they'd never met before. I don't want somebody just showing up at the door right. saying, "Hi, I'm from Seniors Helping Seniors." Right. You know, it's like no, we're 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 a lot more uh, personal personally involved in doing things like that. 
because most of my, uh, once we set somebody up like that, yeah. I, I've had my client, my caregivers stay with the person for two, three, four years, you know, until something else changed in there. If it works. If it works, if it, works. it stays and works very well. They become very close, they become very close with the family because we're communicating with the other caregivers who may or may not live around here. Right. So now I just wanted you to jump to. Yes. So you've done did this for years, but yes. but then recent fairly recently, yes. you got involved with the the your kind of counterpart, who's right. a younger man who was doing something similar closer to Boston. Yes. And now you're working together. Yes. And in addition to that, you folks acquired mm -hmm. pleasantries. Right. Pleasantries, I've talked a lot about mm -hmm. in the presentations I've done at the South Road Senior Center because it's, it's the one and only uh, a day program, so-called so social day program, right. so that if you've got a spouse or a loved one mm -hmm. who's got some memory issues, being at home and you're Frank and Mary, and mm -hmm. now you're Frank and you're taking care of Mary, but, but you, you want to get out of the house sometimes, right? That you could bring Mary to Pleasantries, which mm -hmm. is in Marlboro, right, right. On the, like a, right near Fort Meadow, right. on the Hudson Line. Um, she could be there for the day, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and you could do all the other things that yes. you need to do, but in the meantime, sh she's there. Right. So can you just talk a little bit about Pleasantries? Because this is also an ad, because I think this is an important sure. resource that people here have no idea that there are so few places like this right. in the whole state right. for folks who are in this situation. Yeah. So talk but, about that a little bit. And again, uh, uh, very quickly, so yeah. I merged my business with the Boston office back last October, yeah. so now we cover a very wide area. But we have found that we a lot of the people that we deal with have uh, issues around memory. Yeah. Uh, we're very involved with the Alzheimer's Association. Yeah. I've been trained by them and others uh, in it, and we train a lot of our folks in it. Um, but when this became available, I knew Tammy for about five years and have seen what's going on over there and actually volunteered at some other similar programs uh, in Hudson. Right. And I said, this really works because the caregivers need a break. It's a 24-hour assignment. When you're, when you're dealing with somebody with dementia, you just never know. 24 and so this gives them a full eight hours to do what they need to do, set up their own doctor's appointments. You, the biggest thing about caregivers taking care of somebody like this on their own is you have to take care of yourself first. It's like the face mask dropping out of the airplane. You have to take care of yourself right. first. So you have to make sure that you're being able to see your own doctors, relax. Um, I know one woman that we took care of her husband who had dementia. Um, she liked to play golf. And before this happened, she would play golf once a week with her, with yep. her girlfriends, it was nine holes, but it was yep. four hours out on her own. So we would always, we would go over so she could get that break. We did a couple of other things for her, but that was on the schedule. That was yep. very important. And, but it was very important to the whole family exactly. that she do that. Exactly. So it's a, it's a non-medical day model. Again, so everybody there has some forms of mild cognitive impairment or dementia, um, but they don't need, they don't get any medical attention. They're not getting any personal care. What they are is associating with other people like them. Right in a, a nice house setting, it's a, it's a ranch house on a nice lot, so people feel like they're in a home, not in an institution, right. uh, where they have breakfast and lunch. A lot of them help participate in making breakfast and lunch, and we have other activities that they do. And I'm just gonna Art activities, we, we have music therapists that are coming in now once or twice a you, month. You mentioned and you're doing stuff more We're, and more in conjunction with Acevedt School, which Acevedt, is very, very close. We're starting to, and with Marlboro High School, right with intergenerational things going on. So they're active. And again, the biggest thing for a lot of people with that is the social isolation piece. Right. And this gets them to associate with as many as 10 or 11 others uh, of their, uh, their same, from the same situation. And so now I'm just gonna do a story. We, okay. So, so my, my oldest sister is now 84. Mm -hmm. uh, her husband rec recently died. He had uh, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. but, it, but he was able to stay at home for six years uh, as, the, as the Alzheimer's progressed. Mm -hmm. And I would say at least one of those years was because he was going to Pleasantries, mm -hmm. right? And he would right. go every day. And he loved it because yes. for him, once again, he was with a set of other people who all had memory loss. Mm -hmm. So for them, it, you know, if, if you're in a, in a more general population and people are not are sensitive to the, mm -hmm. uh, about this, 
um, you have memory loss, that's kind of embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're kind of in the middle of a sentence and people are like, oh right. my God, you know, right. what do I say? But if everybody's got memory loss, right. it's a joke. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, hey, we all get memory loss. Right. So you can kind of tell stories about right. memory loss, you yeah. know? Um, and I, I still remember one, one time my sister telling me, she, she picked up her husband uh, at the end of the day and they were driving home. She said, uh, Ralph, so how, how was your day? <laughs> oh, I had a great yeah. day. What did you do? I have no idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, the but, moral of the story, yeah. What difference did it, does right. it make if you remember what you did? Right. The question is, how are you? Right. How are you? And right. this place was so positive and right. empowering to him yes. for that day, right? And in the meantime, my sister could kind of do the things she needed to do. Right. But at the end of the day, her husband, and that was her goal. She wanted her husband to be happy, you know? Yeah. And it was great. It's it was a very great. small, intimate environment like that. Yep. Not institutional at all. And it is really nice to see whether people are playing cards or we have one guest now who plays the piano yeah. and it's That's really great. So you hear that and people are, 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 are really smiling and laughing. They have, a, they have a good time. And it's so very difficult to find an environment where people, particularly with dementia, can have a good time. Can have a good time. You know, just enjoy themselves for a, a few time. hours. So that's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. So let me tell you. Okay, so what are you doing? I mean, because when, even when I started, just a mere, you know, six or seven years ago, it seems like elder law has just grown tremendously. A lot. So, a lot. I a mean, lot. it's just very complicated now, situation. But well, you get, you not having been an elder law attorney all your career either. No, no, I, I, so I started, so I'm, I am, I grew up in Marlboro. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, last of six kids, and my, my dad worked um, as the caretaker in a estate in Framingham called Raceland for many of the older oh, folks that yeah. will remember. Actually, a lot of folks from Ashland yeah. remember Raceland, Raceland Estate. And he was the caretaker for years. Mm -hmm. So my, we, as we grew up, you know, we'd all, we all worked for him. And yeah. so, so anyway, so I, I was there and I went on, I, you know, got a scholarship to St. John's and, and then I got a scholarship to Princeton and mm -hmm. I came, but I came back home mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to be president of the United States. So I came back <laughs> home and went to law school around here and mm -hmm. became a city councilor in Marlboro. And then one uh, New Year's Eve party, met my wife from Hudson. Um, and and uh, we kissed at midnight and I proposed <laughs> two months later. I'd never really? met her, only, <laughs> only New Year's Eve party I ever went to. But she didn't want to be the wife of the President of the United <laughs> States. So my whole life has been Plan B. <laughs> so I practiced for years and years out of Marlboro. Yeah. Um, and then in 1991, my mother died in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. She had uh, um, she had dementia resulting from those old TIAs. Yes. And, yeah. and I watched the whole thing play out with my dad and my mom, and my mom who was very shy to begin mm -hmm. with, getting quieter and quieter, mm -hmm. and more and more uh, needing my dad, but they never went, would leave the house mm -hmm. because my mother was so embarrassed about mm -hmm. the fact that you know, she, was having, she was having trouble with sentences mm -hmm. and stuff. And my dad would get so frustrated, and it was just really, really hard. He, was really, mm -hmm. he couldn't take a walk, go out right. to take a walk, because my mother would say, oh, Phil, I, I, don't, I don't know where you're gonna be. Yeah. So I watched that play out, so after that, and I also watched as she went to the nursing home and the mm -hmm. financial issues started right. coming up, how that played out. So I decided to focus more on that. So increasingly my practice became that. And then about nine years ago, um, um, I knew one of the folks at Myrick O'Connell, which is a much larger law firm, mm -hmm. and they were actually looking for someone that was focusing on elder law because they traditionally, their trusts and estates folks had focused more on estate tax minimization issues, other kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were increasingly finding folks who were saying, you know, my mom's got this issue and blah, 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 right? right? And so that's when I moved. And, and so in, in the, the, all of my previous life, I would say in the previous 33 years that I had practiced, mm -hmm. I had done maybe three or 400 elder law cases. Mm -hmm. Since moving to Myrick O'Connell, I have done a little over 1,400 elder really? law, because that's all I do. Yeah. And, but, but in the course of that, you, you find yourself, of course, talking to folks who've got those set of issues, mm -hmm. the, the kind of uh, you know, asset restructuring issues and how can we deal with mass health and, mm -hmm. and what about the, making sure that I, I can keep control of my life and who's my proxy and all that stuff. But then you also find yourself dealing with more globally, if I'm Frank and Mary, mm -hmm. right, how do I live my life? Right. Which is really what got me interested in starting to do shows like this one mm -hmm. and getting involved in the program. So, in, and then several years ago, um, I remember hearing about, I, I had raised this issue. I was at one of those, uh, you know, we always going to seminars, right? Yes. Well, that's what you yeah. do, right? And there's this wonderful guy named John Zeisel, 
yeah. who had developed, uh, he is actually the person who runs the very large memory care community uh, in, at New Horizons in right. Marlboro. And they're fabulous. Yes, they and are. Zeisel is this kind of national thought leader mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with the various issues around dementia. And I remember going to a seminar and saying, and there was a Q&A, and I raised mm -hmm. my hand and I said, I understand how you apply all of these things kind of where you are mm -hmm. in, this, in, this, in this memory care community, but how, how do you deal with it if you're in the community itself, mm -hmm. if you're out in the community, if you're Frank and Mary and you want to be at home? Mm -hmm. can, how can a community deal with helping folks who have some memory loss and their caregivers deal with all these things? Mm -hmm. And he said, great question, <laughs> and I don't know anybody who's doing it. Yeah. Right, and so I remember. And then later, I remember it was another thing with the Alzheimer's Association, and I and I asked somebody there. I said, "Is there any place that's really doing this? That's looking at this as a community matter?" Mm -hmm. And literally, the person there said, "I heard there's this program in Minnesota, mm -hmm. right?" And but he said, "I don't know anything about it." So I asked my paralegal, mm -hmm. um, who is very interested in these issues. Mm -hmm. You've met her, mm -hmm. right? Her, her, her mother has got some memory issues. Mm -hmm. She's the caregiver, you know, mm -hmm. the usual. We've yes. all gone through this, yes. right? And she found this program in, in, uh, in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and their goal was to produce what they referred to as dementia-friendly communities, mm -hmm. a community in which, for want of a better term, for want of a better explanation, no matter how old I get and no matter how good my memory is, mm -hmm. I can still live there and be safe right. And be not embarrassed, right. and be not embarrassed, yep. right? And so we we found the folks out there. Um, I actually, Myrick O'Connell, paid for uh, a group of us to go to Minnesota, mm -hmm. or we paid for part of it. And I brought three three senior center directors mm -hmm. with me, um, uh, together with a woman named Christine Alessandro, whom we both know, mm -hmm. who is the executive director of uh, Bay Path Elder Services, mm -hmm. the elder elder services agency in this region right. that is really the funnel through which the federal and state various program money goes. Right. And she's, once again, she's a real leader mm -hmm. in this. Yes, country. she is. So, we, so the, four, the, the, the five of us went out, Christine mm -hmm. and I, and the senior center directors from Marlboro, Hudson, and Northboro, mm -hmm. to see if this was all smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see, you know, is, is there really a there there? Mm -hmm. And we really came back totally sold, mm -hmm. right? So we came back. And each one of those senior center directors started developing a, 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 a dementia-friendly communities mm -hmm. initiative in their community, mm -hmm. which really amounted to getting a group of volunteers together, going out into the community, mm -hmm. talking to various business folks, mm -hmm. talking to folks at, the, in the, at City Hall, the medical people, mm -hmm. and, and basically trying to gather data about mm -hmm. how they were dealing with folks who had dementia and their caregivers mm -hmm. in those various places, right? And then coming together at the end and saying, so developing a set of recommendations, mm -hmm. what can we do? How can we mm -hmm. try to improve our, our um, communities? Mm -hmm. So all three of them did that, um, and each one developed kind of different kinds of initiatives. Mm -hmm. And they're really initiatives in, in their whole variety of things. Yeah. But, the, but the key to them, I think, is that they're all based in the community. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to be, Frank and Mary in Southboro don't live in Marlboro. Right. They don't live in Massachusetts. Right. They live in Southboro. Right. And the question is, what is that package of things in mm -hmm. Southboro? Mm -hmm. so, so one of the things that, that that really made me appreciate was the, the I don't want to say the necessities, necessity for, but the possibility of a show like what we're trying mm -hmm. to do right now. Mm -hmm. and the, the goal of which is really to, first of all, make people aware of programs like Seniors Helping Seniors, mm -hmm. programs like Pleasantries, programs like this, this other interesting parallel program that was developed by th these three senior right. center directors. It's called Daybreak. Right. And the woman from Hudson, Janice Lawn, the senior center director, developed this several years ago, um, which is really a, a mini version of Pleasantries. Right. So if you're if you were a, se a Hudson senior and you know or, and you had memory loss or your mm -hmm. or your, your your partner had memory loss, you could go to the senior center once a week. Mm -hmm. It ran from 11 to 2, um, and you go to the senior center and 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 there'd be and meet with have a group of people right. there, and there'd be lunch, 
and there be music, right. and there be some exercise yeah. things and activities. A social experience, Sa yes. Same thing, yes. same thing, yeah. what you're describing, right? And I remember Janice started that five years ago, and for months, mm -hmm. literally nobody came. Right. Two people, three people, she was so frustrated. Yeah. But then it started growing, and mm -hmm. now there were like 20, 25 people, mm -hmm. you know, every, that one day that mm -hmm. she has it. Mm -hmm. So when we came back from um, uh, um, Minnesota and after we did these surveys, in the meantime, this program was growing and these three senior center directors mm -hmm. are now close friends. Mm -hmm. So they got a grant from Metro West Health Foundation and now the program is running in all three communities. Yeah. And in each community, same time, yep. each community a different day, right. and all of the communities have agreed that no matter which community you're in, you can go to any of them, mm -hmm. right? right? And even, in, and I know in the case of Marlboro, you can go to Hudson and, and Northboro using the Marlboro, Marlboro Senior Center bus. Imagine yes, that. I know. Going across <laughs> a town line, line. Yeah. right? So. That's just an example of, of the kinds of things. So, so, I, so, so I guess my real hope is that through this show, we can, we can be talking to people about things like pleasantries mm -hmm. and like seniors helping seniors that are things here mm -hmm. and people here, and, and as it happens, you're one of those people mm -hmm. that people do need to know mm -hmm. about from out here. But also that we can be bringing in some folks from other places right. to talk about their programs, right? right? Or to, or to talk to some of, you know, the, 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 the state rep from here mm -hmm. and the state senator from here. I know over in, in Ashley, we're inviting Senator mm -hmm. Karen Spilka because mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a sh we're doing a show over in your old hometown. Yeah, right? and she's very involved with elder and, issues. And she's Absolutely. the senator. Very That's, strong commitment to that. Yeah, really, because, yeah. Her, and, and once again, one of her parents yeah. had dementia. Yeah. So she gets it. Mm -hmm. Governor Baker's, one of his mm -hmm. parents had Alzheimer's. Right. He gets it, you know. So, so to be making people aware of what the possibilities right. are. Right. That's the goal. And for folks who are at home and had no idea of this, right. to make sure they know they're not alone. Right. Right? Right. Because there's still a stigma attached to dementia. Clearly. It was like cancer was 20 years ago. Exactly. It's very, very uh, stigmatizing for exactly. some people. Exactly. It's not a and disease it, it, to many people. It's an embarrassment. And that's the whole dementia friendly, to unstigmatize it. Unstigmatize uh, it. But also very practical. When you said individual towns, I know in Southboro, all the EMTs, fire department, police department, are trained how to deal with somebody with dementia. Wandering, if you go into somebody's house, how do you do? What, what's their reaction gonna be? How do you react to them? It's so important that these things get done, but they have to get done on a town-to-town -to -town basis. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, they, it's your truth. And, the, and, and that may be a guest that we can invite, is someone from the right. police department or from fire to kind of talk about right. Some of, the, some of those incidents, because as, right. as I think one of the, I remember our, our police chief talking about that mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you do a traffic stop or you go to a house because of a call for a disturbance. Right. And you walk in and you see somebody who is acting erratically right. and really loud and aggressive. Mm -hmm. Your immediate reaction and what you're trained to assume right. is that person's got a drug or an alcohol problem. Right. 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 If, on the other hand, you know the person has dementia, right. which has the same kinds of that's right. how they're going to act, right. totally yeah, changes. changes. Instead of right. you're starting to be, you know, hands up against the wall and right. da da da, right. it's all about calming things down, right? right? But, yep. but it's just about having those people be but aware. Otherwise, it's just... Otherwise, it's just, it can be uh, terrible. It, it's a terrible experience. It can be now. terrible. You know, so... So listen. Okay. I'm really glad we're doing this. I am too. Thanks very much for the cogent interview. <laughs> 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 and for talking about what you're doing. Yeah. I hope you'll join us for these shows. We're going to be doing them monthly. Uh, and they'll be broadcast also during in, in, in uh, South Pro Cable, and you're going to be able to get this on demand uh, anytime. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary in South Pro. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.